All right, today's video is going to be my top five favorite wrestling experiences as a fan. Uh, pretty much uh, the memories I have stalking and uh, pretty much going to every show possible in the area. And uh, really, it only started in 2009 when uh, myself and Legend Killer found out that Mr. Kennedy Kennedy was signing at a local Best Buy in Toronto. And we got the signing started at 6 p.m. and we got there at 9:30 a.m. and we waited in that line and we were, you know, even being there that early, we were the 10th and 11th person in line. And um, but really from there things snowballed off because the next month I met Trish Stratus and went to my first indie show. And uh, from you know that's how Legendary Soul was pretty much made. <clears throat> so we started doing videos the month after. No, sorry, that yeah, literally like two weeks after I met Trish Stratus, I started doing videos. And, like, from there, it's like whenever there was a big show where there was a big star, myself and Legend Killer would be there. And obviously things have changed now where it's myself and Jade going to shows in Toronto and, and of course, Buffalo. And uh, the long-distance trips, the click comes uh, back in business, and we head up to WrestleMania. And over the years, I have uh, gained many precious memories that I hold very dear to my heart. And... Uh, this video is going to be, you know, sh I'll be telling you my top five favorite moments. And one of the moments, obviously, I'll tell you, you go explain after, but it does not have to do with what happened in 2009. But I'll get to that when it comes. Um, but number five would be when I met Hulk Hogan. And I made a whole video pretty much dedicated to meeting him because for me, reality didn't set in until I was standing there. And I wasn't nervous at all, but there was that one point where I was looking at him and I say it in the video, I put my hand on my hip, and I'm looking at him, and I'm smiling, and he's, he's like, talking about, brother, we had to put Goldberg over, Bischoff this, Nitro this, Georgia Dome this. I said, no, brother, we gotta do it, Bischoff didn't want to do it, but I said, brother, we gotta, good for business, good for business. And at that point, a sweat trickled down my forehead, and I felt like someone just threw hot water on me. It was like my body temperature rose, like, 300 degrees, and I was like, that's when I'm like, holy crap, Hulk Hogan is standing in front of me, bullshitting about WCW and how he didn't want to put Goldberg over. It's, it was very incredible, very surreal. And I think, you know, Hogan is lit on the top five list of the most recognizable people in the world. So, you know, being there and, and just talking with him was just uh, amazing to see. And even being in his presence, like I was waiting there. And, and at the time it didn't set in, but now I look back, I'm like, man, like that was pretty insane. And I get to do it again in WrestleMania weekend. I get to be in a room with him. Private room with Hulk Hogan. Uh, number four is um, was what I'm talking about. It was my very first uh, WWE show, which was May 15th, 2004. 2000, yeah, it was May 15th, 2004. And uh, myself and my brother was at, at Hamilton's Cops Coliseum, home of the very first Royal Rumble. Main event was John Cena versus Randy Orton for the WWE title. The Great Khali interfered, trying to cost John Cena the match, but John Cena, of course, gave Randy Orton the AA. Then, I think it was called FU at the time, and uh, won. Remember like it was yesterday. I bought the uh, John Cena military hat, and seeing the ring for the first time, it was huge, and my heart just sank. Like It was a surreal moment just being uh, like my, it was. It didn't even matter if it was a house show. I was at a WWE event. After watching it for, you know, 12 years of my life, I finally like, got to go to a show. Uh, letter, you know, it was by myself, too, myself and my brother, who's, who's two years younger than me. And uh, it, was, it was pretty good. I think a, a wrestling fan's first show is always one of those things that you never forget. Uh, number three is um, when the Hell in a Cell lowered at WrestleMania 28. And I know Miguel was talking about this, too, but standing there and watching the Cell drop and you look in the ring and Triple H and Undertaker are face to face, Michael's in the corner and the music in the background and it just, it, the, the sight of just seeing that thing just come over both these guys and just surround just in steel and I'm in awe and I'm filming and I have my, my phone in one hand, my flip cam in the other hand, my camera around my neck, I'm trying to do all three all at once. Uh, it was it was really, really insane. Number two was uh, WrestleMania 27. Uh, Steve said it best. He said, when you go to your first WrestleMania and you walk through the curtain where your, you know, your aisle is, you literally stop in your tracks and you look and you see, you're like, man, 
this is amazing. Like, I saw the set, I saw the people, the atmosphere. This is what I've been waiting since October of 2010, you know, to do. You know, here we are, March or April 2011, and it's like a whole year's worth of wrestling all culminating into one night, and it was my first WrestleMania, and it was in Atlanta, I was with my good friends, and it was a very surreal moment, and it was another one of those times where your heart just sinks, and you stop in your in your tracks, and you just think about, like, man, like, I'm in Atlanta, I'm at WrestleMania, this is insane. And so that was definitely a, a once in a, well, it is technically once in a lifetime, because it was my first WrestleMania. And the number one uh, memory slash experience as a wrestling fan was meeting Kurt Angle for the first time. And the reason being is I met him at a, an independent show in September 2010. September 2010? Might be 2000. Yeah, it was 2010. September 2010. No, I don't I don't even remember. I'm not even... <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when I met him. But uh, it was... Uh, we met him at the indie show. He signed the autograph, and that's when he was sober. So, you know, whatever. Kurt Angle's a quiet guy. It's been well documented. You know, he talks a little bit, but he's not going to go full in depth with his life until you go an hour after the show. You see him at the bar. He's drinking. He's flipping shit on everyone. And that was an experience of a lifetime. Myself and Ledger Killer come there. He's sitting on a chair by himself. There's maybe seven beers beside him. And Legend Killer's like, can I buy you a beer? And he's like, listen... I'm about to pass out after this one, but let's just say you bought me this. And he's like, I'm going to shake your hand, and I'm going to tell people that you bought me this beer. And Andrew Killer said, sure. And I sat right beside him. I'm like, Kurt, Kurt, I'm your biggest fan. I'm your biggest fan. I just, I was flipping shit. And I had my camera in my hand and the infamous uh, hello YouTube thing on Legendary Assault channel. That, a whole conversation with him. Uh, I feel bad doing it now because I kind of instigated things by asking him, like, What's with, and this is a quote, like, what's with this jackass Jeff Jarrett stealing your wife and, you know, pretty much screwing shit up for you? And he's like, then he started flipping out, then he, then he started, he didn't get upset, but, you know, he was really, um, he was, uh, he was drunk, so, you know, drunks are, they're gonna, you know, blow things up, and he started swearing, saying, my kids are in his house, he did this to my life, he did this, I don't have this anymore, and, um, we got some heat for it, but believe it or not, there were some people who were in that room who saw the video and started a whole comment war with myself and Legend Killer. Uh, we took it, you know, at the time we were just starting out here, so I guess people getting mad at us didn't float so well with either of us, but now it's just whatever. But at the time, uh, it was it was amazing to see, you know, just sitting there, you know, drinking with Kurt Angle. Like, how many people can honestly say that they've got to drink with one of their favorite wrestlers of all time? Uh, to me, I think it would be very few. Unless you're, you're like, a, you know, I don't know, who drinks a lot? Scott Hall fan. No, Scott Hall's a good guy. I see the change coming. But um, that was definitely number one. And we got a pitcher with him. He had a chew tobacco, and he was doing that. I, I thought it was just whatever I pictured Kurt Angle to be, it was the total opposite after, let's say, 11 o'clock p.m. And uh, that was all. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Leave a video response if you guys have your own. I sure a lot of you guys have a bunch of stories of meeting guys, going this, doing this. I uh, love to hear it, and um, see you guys next time.